Hi everyone, welcome to episode 77 of Knits and Stuff. My name is Alicia, and today we'll be talking about a lot of stuff. (laughs) Um, It has been almost a year since my last podcast, and there have been some changes. As you can maybe see, I have a different background. Um, I think I might have posted on Instagram that we bought a house. So I've now been in this house for almost a year. And um, yeah, I'm finally getting to sit down to podcast. Um, And what better time than while we are having to shelter in place. So hopefully... Um, you all out there are healthy and safe and um, managing okay during this strange time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I figured I should try and get some podcast recording done um, and I can show off some of the knitting that I've been doing. Um, not as many projects as I could have, <laughs> but um, I still have some few things and a finished object. Um and definitely some works in progress, and some pretty things, um, and yeah, uh, so let's, uh, let's get started. Um, first, finished object. So you might have seen this in the last podcast podcast episode. I started a Find Your Fade shawl out of uh, Madeline Tosh uh, various fingering weight yarns, and also Knox Yarn Company, um, so I will slowly go through the, uh, the colors on the camera, but, um, yeah, I finally finished it, and I think I'm showing the wrong side. Nope, I'm showing the right side. Okay. Um, so it is huge, and I love it, and I love the colors. Uh, they progress from a creamy color through some pinks and, um, peachy tones into, grays and eventually a darker gray at the bottom. Um, I did not prepare any show notes for today, so um, I will have show notes either if you're watching on YouTube down below or um, linked to on um, Knits and Stuff podcast.com. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, and then that will have, um, a link to the Ravelry, Ravelry page, which will have all the yarns listed, um, and the colorways. But it's basically, um, a mix of single ply fingerings with the exception of the Knox Yarn Company. Um, and then some of them have, uh, Stellina in it, so they're kind of shiny, and some of them are plain. So, yeah, that's that and it's very large I can't even hold out the um the shawl in one wingspan (laughs) so yeah I think it takes about two (laughs) but yeah it's ginormous and I love it it's very squishy too so yeah that has been getting a lot of wear um yeah so that's my find my find your fade find my fade (laughs) And I have a bunch of other finished objects which I haven't shown on the podcast before because I started them after the last episode, but um, lots of quick knits and some baby knits. So I had some Christmas gifts that I made. Um, they are two um, hat kits from uh, We Are Knitters, and um, so I, I don't have them with me because I already gifted them, but um, I'll show pictures here, maybe here, of what they are. But I made two um, Montmarty turbans, one out of the beige baby alpaca and one out of the gray. Um, so those were kind of interesting to knit. Um, I was going to make one for myself as well, but I think it doesn't fit my head as nicely as it fits uh, the gift recipients' heads. So um, I might... Uh, use the yarn for something else but I um, got like a I think it's like a dusty pink color I don't remember the name of the colorway but um, as soon as I start making something with it uh, you'll see so yeah that's um, two finished objects and then I've been doing some baby knitting because my um, friends have been having babies or going to have babies so I don't think I showed this on the last podcast um I'm pretty sure I hadn't started yet. So I also will have to show pictures because it's been um, 
gifted. So I made a Garden Stitch Baby Cardigan um, by Hohi Locatelli, and it's out of Lisa Souza's sock in the colorway South Pacific, and then the border color I used uh, Miss Babby's Yummy, Miss Babs Yummy Two Ply Toes um, in the suspense colorway. And I want to say that was left over from a, a gradient set um, that I had. If not, then it then it wasn't. <laughs> but I think it was. And then, um, yeah, I had two cute little fish buttons um, for, for the cardigan. And then I also made some matching booties. Um, I've made these before, the Sar Sarchi's booties. Um which are little garter stitch, two-toned booties. Um, again, the same yarn with Lisa Susan Sock and Miss Babs Yummy Two Play Toes um, with just plain, uh, plain buttons on them. And then some more baby knitting. Um, I made the stacked, stacked stag horn sweat baby sweater um, by Stacy Cilia. Uh, this is out of... Madeline Tosh Farm Twist in the colorway Safety Glass. Um, I knitted on US 4s, 3.5 millimeters, and US 6, 4.0 millimeters. Um, you can see it's got this cable detail down the middle, um, and it has yet to be washed and blocked, um, but otherwise it is complete and ready to go to, um, to one of my friend's soon-to-be-born baby. Um, so hopefully this will fit by the time um, it comes around, by the time winter comes around, um, because it's going to be way too warm <laughs> for uh, for the fall or summer. Um, but yeah, I knit the 6 to 12 month size, so they should be 6 months around the time December or January comes around, so hopefully fits. Also um, knit a golden pear baby hat um, by Melissa Thompson, and I knit this out of Madeline Tosh Unicorn Tails, um, which is a single ply yarn, and the top color is antique lace, um, and then silver fox is the white whitish color, and then the last one is called Rainwater, um, and I didn't put what size needles I used, <laughs> but um, That'll be linked to in the show notes once I update my Ravelry page. Um, but yeah, it's this cute, uh, like, color work pattern. Um, very simple. And uh, I made a matching cardigan to go with it, which is the baby vertebrae, but with um, the same pattern mimicked on the... Um, the bottom of the cardigan and on the sleeves, which I really like how this turned out. Uh, so this is the baby vertebrae by Kelly Van Neerkirk, and I knit the three to six month size um, in light worsted, although I think most of these yarns are DK weight, um, but I use US 5s, 3.75 millimeters in US 7s, um, 4.5 millimeter needles, and the colorways um, were El Greco in Madeline Tosh DK Twist, um, and then the lighter white is Antler, um, and that's just Madeline Tosh DK. Uh, and then the main color is Antique Lace, which is Madeline Tosh Vintage, um, which I think I knit a cardigan out of, but I don't remember <laughs> what the name was. Um, but yeah, so I had some leftovers of that, and I got to knit a baby vertebrae. So that'll be, um, also needs to be washed and blocked, but will be ready to go to its recipient, um, to wear when it gets cooler. So I've also knit a few scrunchies. Um, this is the throwback scrunchie by Winter's Weather Knits, and, um, I think this is the third one that I've knit so far. Um, I had a few modifications to the pattern. I basically just made it wider. Um, or like thicker and then um, yeah I think that was pretty much it I cast on or I knit 25 rows um, which I think the pattern calls for like 10 rows um, so it'll be a little bit thinner it was crunchy but so I've made three two uh, that are about this size and then one smaller one um, so these are just nice to 
<laughs> to use. Um, they're really soft and they don't tangle in your hair. Um, and then I have curly hair, so it helps to not get stuck. <laughs> but yeah, they're kind of fun. Um, so I'll probably be making more of these because I did get a lot of the yarn, which I realized I didn't say what it was. Um, it's the uh, Bernat um, Velvet yarn. Um, so I got a bunch of different colorways. And then I also finished um, a quick brioche pattern, which is my first time doing brioche, and I was really excited to actually try it because it's been a while um, since I've heard of brioche, I guess, and then wanted to take a stab at it, but I never did. Um, so now I finally have a first brioche project, and it's um, the Not Quite a Blizzard headband by Melissa Lambino, and this is out of Lion Brand, Woolies, Thick and Quick, um, in the colorway Wheat. And it's a really simple, easy pattern, a great introduction to brioche, and I didn't realize how, like, straightforward it was. I guess it's a lot easier to do when you're just using one um, colorway of yarn. Um, whereas my next project uh, is going to be, or is two color brioche. So, um, but one color brioche was really simple. So if you haven't tried it yet, um, I highly recommend it. It's really fun and apparently also a good way to get um, that like ribbing texture um, in your knitting without having to do any purls. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> so yeah, that's a finished object. So on to works in progress. Um, I have a couple things from a while ago that I've been working on. Um, one of them is the Kick in the Pants uh, socks by Lollipop Yarn. So I finished the first sock. Um, if I had thought this further in advance, or plan this further in advance, I would have a sock blocker with me, but I don't. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so this is uh, out of Lollipop Yarn traditional sock, and it's a pattern called Kick in the Pants. Um, it's got little scallops in the top, and then on the top of the foot. Um, and I knit it top down. Um, I also use a, t or I did a twisted rib. Um, and these ones I actually started knitting on a 6 inch circular needle, um, they're US ones, 2.25 millimeters, but I found that my hands did not like knitting on the 6 inch that much, um, so I eventually switched to my Addy Flexi Flips, um, and I think I actually get a tighter gauge, uh, slightly tighter gauge when I knit with a Flexi Flips, but it otherwise is not really that noticeable, and I actually... Not sure that I can tell <laughs> where I switched, um, but yeah, it's a lot more comfortable to knit with um, non six inch or non nine inch circulars. Um, and then I have started the second sock, but I have not got very far because <laughs> it's twisted rib, um, which uh, yeah, it takes a little bit longer. I regret choosing to do that, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so these socks are coming along and they're in um, living in a chicken boots bag. So I have another work in progress, but I actually don't know where I put my bag. I, I brought it with me on a drive um, and I remember bringing it back into the house, but I don't know where I put it. But it was some dope socks. Um, I guess I'll have to wait until next time to show them um, and move on to another work in progress that's new, which is Reiko, um, by Noriko Ho, and it is a beanie with a little pom-pom. Um, I bought a kit from Stitches West last year and finally started knitting it. Um, I actually started, um, with the recommended size needles, which were US 5 and US 7, um, and I knit the medium size hat. Um, but the gauge on the body of the hat, uh, didn't really feel, like it felt too loose, um, and I think it was a little bit bigger than what the pattern calls for, so I went down a needle size on, um, the body to a US 6, which is a 4.0 mm, millimeter <laughs> needles, and then I kept, uh, the brim of the hat in the same, in the US 5s, um, so I've only knit a little bit on the 
um, body, but so I'm not even back to where I, I got to um, with the larger needles. But um, yeah, so far it's been a good knit and an interesting pattern. Um, it's cabled um, in the body and then the brim is garter stitch, but it uses short rows. So it's kind of an interesting way to make it fit better instead of using ribbing. So that's kind of fun. Um, something new and I'm sure hopefully I will get this done before winter. Um, but yeah, it'll be fun to wear and if it doesn't work on me then it'll be a good gift. And then the yarn that came with it um, is uh, Nano Stitch Laboratory Kinetic DK in the colorway Mineral. Um, and then it came with a also a dusty pink pom-pom, which is pretty fun. <laughs> really into the dusty pink lately. Um, there's a lot of that in my Find Your Fade shawl and the latest scrunchie. Um, and some more, another project which is coming up. Oh, and this is also living in a Erin Lane bag, a sheeple bag, which is Doctor Who themed. Very fun. So, another big project that I started since last we spoke um, is The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. Um, I had some sweater, sweater yarn stash um, from Madeline Tosh. Uh, so, Madeline Tosh DK Twist in the colorway El Greco, which you noticed, you might have remembered that I used in the baby cardigan. Um, so I started a weekender with it, um, and I am making my way through, um, I'm knitting this on, uh, many sizes, uh, are called for US 6, 4.0 millimeters, US 7, 4.5 millimeters, and US 8, 5.0 millimeters, um, and I've already knit the bottom, <laughs> it's a bottom-up sweater, um, and... I am on the front. Um, it's also knit inside out so that um, you get a... This is kind of hard to tell on camera with all the light <laughs> coming through. But um, you get the pearl or like reverse stockinette stitch um, texture on the front with a kind of faux seam um, with some knit stitches, I guess. <laughs> or with, yeah, a slip stitch faux faux seam. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to finish it. Um, but it's taking quite a while <laughs> to, um, make progress on it. Uh, especially when I was still knitting the body part, it felt like I wasn't making, um, any progress with each row. And eventually I had to put a stitch marker on, um, or progress creeper so I could see that I was actually <laughs> knitting rows and not just going in circles, which technically I guess I was. But, um, yeah, so that's the Weekender. I have another new project. Um, they are some mohair bed socks, and these are inspired by um, Amy Florence from Stranded Dye Works. I have been watching her podcasts and daily vlogs, um, and she knit a, um, a sock with uh, mohair and fingering weight held together, and I really liked them, and I've been wanting to also try this new mohair trend, I guess, of knitting. Um, I guess it's not that new anymore, but of holding mohair with another uh, strand of regular wool yarn, or just non-mohair yarn, um, and getting that like fuzzy texture that you get uh, with the mohair, and then still like the solid piece of fabric. So, um, basically getting like a halo over your, your fabric. So I'm knitting some toe up socks. <laughs> um, and these are basically the same as, um, what Amy was doing with, um, when it comes to the stitches and the needle size. So I knitting 60 stitches around and using, um, size one and a half needles, which is 2.25 millimeters. Um, and yeah, they're that, um, dusty pink. And they're also Stranded Dye Works yarn. Um, the fingering weight one is, um, BFL nylon fingering in the colorway patisserie. And then the matching, um, mohair silk also in the colorway patisserie. So yeah, just holding those two together. And 
I'm really excited about these. Um, I've already made a lot of progress. I think this was just in a few days um, worth of knitting. So I was hoping I could actually finish these soon enough um, because at the beginning of our shelter in place, it was still cold for here. Um, it was still kind of chilly uh, enough in the house to wear socks and although these would have been very slippery <laughs> on the hardwood floors, um, it would have been nice to have them for keeping warm, but now it's basically summer, <laughs> and it's uh, not too warm yet, but definitely uh, too warm for mohair socks, so probably have to save these until, until um, winter or fall. So my last <laughs> and final work in progress is um, the brioche project that I was talking about. It's a two-color brioche um, Fiberista Yarn Cozy by Ariane Galizzi. Um, and I'm knitting this out of Malabrigo Worsted in some leftovers. Um, one is Azul Profundo and the other is Pearl. Um, I'm getting it untangled. <laughs> I'm knitting these on US 6s, 4.0 millimeters, and it takes a long time. <laughs> um, with two color, well, two color brioche seems to make it take a little bit longer because you're switching colors between each row, um, but also because this is knit in the round, you have to purl, um, so that slows it down a little bit. Um, but otherwise, I was really excited when I first started it, and now I'm not as excited, but I still, I still like it. And I love how squishy it is, especially with Malambrigo. Um, it's just so squishy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I still have a little bit to go before I can um, start, like, the next section of the pattern. But, um, yeah, I'm happy with how it's turned out so far and excited that it's my first um, two-color brioche. But, yeah, so you can see with this brioche stitch, um, if you've never seen it before, you have, like, your primary color shows up as the main color on the outside, um, and then the contrasting color is kind of in the background um, but then if you flip it inside out you get your the reverse of that where your contrast color is um, is kind of the main focus on the inside and then the background color is your main color from the outside that just got kind of confusing <laughs> um, but yeah you can see that how the differences are and then I think the way the pattern um, finishes is that this gets rolled over so you get the effect of both I've seen both the blue as the main color and then the um the white as the other main color <laughs> so anyway um yeah I'm excited for this as well and hopefully we'll get some more knitting done um I haven't been knitting as much as I like to or as I would expect to I guess being stuck at home um for more than I normally would be home I guess <laughs> or having less options um for activities on the weekends or weeknights so uh but not doing as much knitting it's still you know filling up my time with more like social activities like playing games online or um chatting with people so yeah Lots of um, knitting to do, <laughs> but um, that can segue us into pretty things because that brioche project is actually sitting in my um, one of my new bags from Nerdbird Makery, and this is what it looks like. I also finally got her baller pin. I've been wanting this for so long. <laughs> um, I just haven't. I hadn't ordered online yet because I was hoping to score it at a festival. But she did not have any when I went to Stitches West, so when these bags um, went up online, I also ordered the baller pin. So, um, yeah, it's so cute. Anyway, <laughs> so this is um, the Nevertheless She Knitted bag, and then I also have um, the Feminist Knit Club one. And it's really nice because it has, like, the wax can canvas bottom um, and just the canvas top and then the leather handles. Um, draw, oh my gosh, <laughs> drawstring, uh, ties on the side so you can kind of cinch it up, and then there's some nice pockets on the inside. So, and very roomy. You can definitely fit a sweater in here, um, 
But yeah, and then I think she, I saw she came out with like a crossbody bag um, that I really want to, but I already have enough bags. And I don't know if I can justify another another one, but um, they're really nice and really great quality too. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, um, so also for pretty things, I got a book in the mail. Um, I pre-ordered, I guess, 52 weeks of socks. Um, I was going to get it from my local yarn store and then they ran out of copies. Um, I think they had like three sets of pre-orders and I didn't check until the third one and then the third one was sold out. Um, so I ordered it from um, Ritual Dyes in Portland, I think. Um, and they still had a couple copies left, so, or a couple pre-orders available. Um, although I didn't have to wait that long um, for this. So anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's 52 Weeks of Socks um, from Lane Publishing, and uh, it is exactly what it says it is. <laughs> it's 52 patterns of um, all types of socks um, from fingering weight up to, I think there's even a bulky pattern in here, but I think most of them are, uh, most of the patterns are fingering, um, or light fingering or sport weight. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. This is such a nice, <laughs> okay. But yeah, I'm really excited for this because it's such a nice, um, book, I guess. <laughs> no, it's such a nice book. Um, the cover is really nice. The texture, I mean, this is not really important to the knitting, but it's like something um, that feels really nice and makes that makes the book like a little more special. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm also really excited for the sock patterns and I really need to knit socks that are not just sockinette stitch. <laughs> um, because yeah, I have a lot of um, plain sock yarn that I would like to have some patterns on instead of just, you know, straight sock and that stitch. But yeah, there are a lot of fun patterns in here. And of course, so one of them that I like are these. They are, um, this is the Intersections sock and I love cables. So <laughs> of course I'm gonna like these. Also the next ones, the Avena socks, have this really pretty stitch pattern, um, which reminds me of uh, Hunter Hammerson um, pattern. Someone, it's similar to, I think, one of the stitches that she was using in um, a recent pattern, but it's got, you know, like those slip, almost like slip stitches, but then they're also um, patterned, I guess, like they're moved. <laughs> Uh, I also really like these ones, the morning coffee. Um, it's got such this nice, like, gradient, hi, <laughs> this gradient, um, pattern in it, and they're very simple, but, or, like, subtle, but still really, um, really nice, and I feel like a lot of these are gonna take a lot more work than, um, uh, regular socks, sock and stitch socks, but they're a fun, um, at least they're small, so they won't they won't be too bad. And then another thing that makes this book really nice is just the photographs. Um, yeah, so there's these spreads of very pretty pictures that I want to kind of jump into and be a part of. So another color work pattern that's nice um, are the elf slippers. Elf. Um, and those look really cozy. Um, and then these are the turning point and they're, uh, knee-high cable socks or calf-high, um, which also look really fun. And these, uh, the carapins, they're a bulky weight pattern, so that would be like a quick slipper to knit and good gift knitting. I also really like these, the Alicia. Um, which are like these little ballet flat style slipper socks. Um, and they look really cute, especially with the stitch detail around the opening. Those look really nice. I also really like the color work in these, the Cindy's Choice. Um, uh, they're, they're just a fun 
color work with the coordinating toe and color work at the at the um, at the cuff. So those are just kind of cozy looking. That is 52 weeks of socks. So I do have some um, new sock yarn to potentially knit something out of here or, you know, do something else with. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> but I'm excited to find um, some patterns from here to start and hopefully get some more sock knitting done. So last thing for pretty things, um, I did go to Stitches West this year right before the shelter in place started. Um, Stitches West is a yarn and fiber expo um, in Santa Clara, California, and um, they have a ton of vendors. I still have yet to go to any classes and just go to the market hall and peruse all of the fun yarn goodies that they have. Um, and I haven't shown, yeah, I do, I'm not going to show everything that I got, but I will show stuff that's easily accessible. <laughs> and that, um, one of those is two skeins of sock weight yarn, um, or, well, yeah, two skeins of sock yarn, um, from Hole in the Wool. And it's first time buying from them, um... But I got two different bases. This one is Bliss Sock, and it's a 80% Superwash Merino if it would focus. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, it's an 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, and 10% Nylon um, two-ply sock yarn. And this colorway is um, called Heatherfield. And then this one is Charm Sock, which is 75% merino, 25% nylon, a uh, four ply, pretty standard sock yarn. And uh, the colorway is called Regency. So it's this nice, rich teal color. And I think, I mean, they look really nice together, <laughs> but they're also different bases. So I might not um, knit something together, uh, but separate, they could also work for any of those, um, or some of those sock patterns from 52 Weeks of Socks. So maybe they will turn into one of that. But um, yeah, that's that. Um, I think we'll wrap it up there because my battery's dying and I don't have my charger or another charged battery ready to go. Um, but yeah, it's already been a long episode anyway and a lot to catch up on. But hopefully, um, I'm aiming for like once a month. Um, I think that'll be a relatively good schedule to hold you. Um, if not once a month, then once a quarter, <laughs> but really hopefully once a month. Um, and yeah, hopefully everyone's doing well and I guess we'll see you in another month in, um, what's, I don't even know what month it is. It's May. Okay. <laughs> so hopefully I'll see you guys in June. Bye.